Austin Ribbine. What's happening? Welcome to uh, Automating Success Podcast. Thank you. I'm excited. Joe Light from here is the host and my beautiful daughter, Julia. Hi, nice to meet you. <laughs> so Austin, Life is Good by Drake. I, uh, yeah. I, I, I love your pick for a song. And uh, <laughs> the part that I liked the best was working hard on the weekends as usual. Yeah. I heard that recently as an entrepreneur and thought, yep, I get shit for this from every one of my friends all the time. So yeah. <laughs> but elaborate a little bit more on any other parts of that song that really, really get to you. I mean, honestly, I think that that was like the biggest reason that I picked it was because that he says it twice in the song and it always just gets me jacked up. And it's like one that I can listen to in the morning and it's not too like, doesn't doesn't go too hard, so you can listen to it when you're waking up and kind of start to get psyched for the day. It's yeah. actually it's actually a hard question for me because I love music and I I have like I don't know how many playlists on Spotify that I listen to throughout the day. So it's kind of between rap and uh, heavy metal song that gets me psyched up. So, uh, but that's the one right now. Yeah. So this is this is what's awesome about music and why we think it's really cool for us to do this on our podcast is. I think that at the end of the day, the music we listen to is relevant to the time that we're in in our life. You know, sometimes there's challenging times and the music might be a little different than uh, when things are just flowing and going easy. So right now, I'm assuming by Life is Good is the title of the song. You're feeling pretty, pretty high on life, you know, which I think you should be, you know, you're CEO yeah. of two companies, right? I mean, how crazy is that? Um, yeah. You know, your cutting edge stuff with the technology you guys have going with Sight, which we're going to get into. But I am interested to know what your other, like, give me a top three. So you said it was close. So what were the other two songs? So there is one, uh, and this is actually an older Drake song. I feel like it's, I'm, I'm super basic because I've got two Drake songs in there. But uh, uh, Nice For What is another one that was like, I think that was in like 2018, maybe nine, maybe like early 2019. And that song always gets me like super pumped up, especially in the summer, listening to it with the windows down and blasting that song. Love it. And then, uh, and then another one, uh, which is more heavy metal, which is Zeal, Zeal and Ardor. Um, and that one is um, Ship on Fire. That was another one. That's that was I was thinking about. So, yeah, so, so I, I'm going to listen to those now. You know, yeah. So yeah, he doesn't know the, the other Drake one. Yeah. He, so, <laughs> so, so, so it's funny to me because, you know, my old rap background was, you know, like, like the old stuff, right? I graduated in the nineties. So I listen to it. I'm like, rap is rap. And she'll listen to it. And it's like, I feel like how my, I felt when I was driving with my mom and dad, when they were listening to oldies 104.3, you know, and I'm like, what the, she's looking at me like, what is this? What is this Snoop Doggy Dog shit you're listening to, you know? But, uh, but, but yeah, so now, you know, now I've kind of gone more into the killers and Lincoln Park. So most of my rap background is because of Julia here. Yes, yes so. I provide the best music taste. I, I so do. I was happy that you chose a Drake song. <laughs> <laughs> so, because she doesn't feel like an outlier now, you know? Yeah. I, I think she was worried. Like, so my intro song is uh, is The Killer, uh, The Man by The Killers. And hers was... It's You Mad by Vic Menza. Yeah. So yeah. I think she was worried she was going to be the only person that picked a rap song. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> so, so, so you really did her well here, Austin. Yeah, I'm glad I could help. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, just, I have one uh, rap playlist on Spotify that's like a thousand songs from the, and just over the last probably two years that, that I've got on there. So yeah. listen, listen to a lot of music, but not just rap, rap, country, uh, some rock, all kinds of different stuff. So, so Austin, you know, you know, I, I know your dad. I've gotten to know him uh, pretty well lately. Um, you know, your dad, he, he's a mentor to me as a guy, you know, I'm 41. Your, your dad has kind of hit some of the, the, the levels that I'm at right now, and I, I kind of look up to what you guys are doing together as a group. Um, so, but, I, you know, I want to know more about you because what interests me about you, and I think Julia also is, you know, Julia is, is kind of like you. She's my daughter. She's in business with me. She's COO of Automated Outdoor. And awesome. our paths are, are quite similar, right? I, you know, you – you guys are in paving and snow removal. I'm in landscaping and snow removal. But now I look at everything you guys are doing with site and pipe view 
and all the technology-based stuff you're getting into to support your customer base and, and uh, use it as your differentiator, we're kind of doing a similar thing. And it's ironic to me is, is the older, you know, the dad looking at how she's taking over the technology side with AOS, much like you're doing with your dad with site. So that's kind of some of the stuff I want to speak on today. Um, yeah, sure. Learn about from your perspective, you know, um, and uh, yeah, so just to kind of give you that little summation. So cool. I want to know, you know, like right out of the gate, you know, young Austin, tell us kind of about where you were at and how you, uh, you became who you are currently. Oh, man. All right. Well, uh, so I grew up in, uh, in Johnsburg, which is what, what northwest of the city of Chicago, basically in Wisconsin, as you guys know where that's at. Yeah. Um, just a small town, um, you know, grew up with an amazing family. You, you know, you, you know, my, my, my dad and um, so I had both my parents and I was the oldest of, uh, of two sisters and then a little brother. Um, so really just had a, had a great childhood growing up. We lived on a lake and uh, and my mom, uh, you know, her full-time job was taking care of us. So summers growing up were amazing. We'd go to, you know, Six Flags and hang out with friends and all kinds of stuff. So, you know, it was a really, really amazing childhood. My, my dad worked a lot, but, um, you know, was always there for us also. And, uh, you know, probably uh, when I was, I think I was 13 is when I started to, to, to start to get into business and work. Um, so pretty young. So up until then it was, you know, all fun and games. And then I had to go out and earn my own money if I wanted to start doing stuff. <laughs> yeah. So I, I know that you, uh, for a little while dabbled in the lawn care industry. I, did. I, I learned that actually listening to your dad's ditch digger uh, podcast. Okay. So, uh, but, but I kind of want, you know, a lot of the, our listeners are in that industry. So uh, if you could elaborate a little bit on that, you know, getting yeah. to the point where you've got to earn your own keep and uh, yeah. how, how your dad pushed you into, or not pushed you, but maybe inspired you, I should yeah. say, in doing that, <laughs> I, you know? I would say a little of both, right? <laughs> I think there's some, some inspiration and, uh, and some pushing as well. Um, yeah, but you know, it started out when I was, I think it was 13 or 14. I think I was 13. And, uh, and at that point, my, you know, it's when my dad kind of said, well, you guys start, if you want to do stuff, you got, or want the new CD or, uh, you know, the new movie that came out that you got to earn it and pay for yourself. Um, so at that time we had a, uh, a pretty large yard just at our house alone. And so he was like, I'll, uh, you can start using the lawnmower. I'll pay you to mow the lawn. Um, and so I was making money doing that at first. And then I was like, man, I, this isn't so bad. You listen, sitting on the lawnmower, listen to music all the time. I should go out and start trying to get some more business. So, um, so I started to drive the lawnmower around the, uh, around the neighborhood that we were in and drop off flyers and, uh, quote them for mowing their lawns on a weekly basis. Uh, and so it got to the point where I had to buy the, buy the lawnmower off of my dad. And it was like a, it was a cheap junky lawnmower at the time. So I, maybe it was a thousand bucks or something like that, not 500 bucks. Um, so I had to, so kind of like took a loan out from him until I could pay him off. Uh, and then after a year, I was, uh, I was able to afford the, the, uh, Toro zero turn radius, uh, which was a little more expensive and bought that along with a, a trailer to be able to haul it around with, but I still couldn't haul it. So, uh, my mom actually, uh, was driving me around to mow lawns. And, uh, so she would, she would drive my trailer around and truck and, or no, she used her truck at the time before I could purchase one. Um, so we used her SUV and, uh, and a trailer and, and the tractor that I bought. Uh, I had like a couple of commercial, uh, properties that, that I did. There's like a strip mall up in Spring Grove, did my dad's couple of his commercial properties and then a bunch of residential. So I always joke because when I was like 14 years old, I was making more money than I was at 23 years old coming into the, to the Rabine group to work as a project manager. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I felt like I was going to talk to your dad about that, Austin. Yeah. Well, that's, that's just how it goes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Being in a family business. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so, so my mom would drive me around to the different spots and it was funny cause she would help me. She would pick up the, while she's waiting, grab the weed whacker and help. And then uh, and then finally, when I was 16, 
I was able to afford my own truck and uh, from the money that I had earned uh, mowing lawns over the, the previous year or two and, uh, and started to expand even more, do some more commercial properties. Um, and uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was, I think it was a great introduction into you know, going out and selling for myself, uh, keeping a schedule to make sure that I was showing up to mow people's lawns when they needed it because you didn't show up or they'd, uh, you'd hear from them. Um, and then, you know, even just from making sure that you're invoicing on time and collecting money and all of those things, I think it was a really uh, great experience and kind of introduction into business at the time um, when it was just, you know, I didn't have a ton of uh, risk there, right? It was just me. I didn't have any employees. Um, so there, you know, it was a good, uh, good learning experience to be able to make some mistakes without a lot of risk. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. You have no overhead at that point, you know, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You, uh, that what you're explained there is one of the things that we only speak about with robotic lawn mowing, because, you know, now go to a company like mine with Langton group, I I have to somehow sell against a young Austin. Yeah. (laughs) You know, you know, why would I use Langton group and not use the kid in the neighborhood with the lawn mower? And I'm like, Holy cow. Like, you know, this is something yeah. that I, I don't think pavers have to deal with, you know, but, no, uh, no, luckily not. <laughs> you know, but you know, you bring up the whole keeping a schedule and making sure you show up, you know, that's what I always talk to people, even, even people just getting in the landscaping. Um, if you put a robot there, you always show up, you know, and yeah. so you just, all you have to do at that point is know how to collect the money and sell the work, you know, but, yeah, um, exactly. So what made you decide though, what was it about landscaping that made you decide, okay, I'm done with this. I'm, I'm hanging it up. Um, I, well, I think that it was, I saw that I could buy. So what I did was I purchased, uh, I got to the point where I hired my cousin to, or no, I, I hired my sister to start mowing some of the lawns for me. I think it was my cousin, my sister that kind of like switched back and forth. So they were mowing lawns for me. Um, and then I, uh, I at like 17 had saved enough to buy a skid loader. Um, so I bought a, a, it was a case 90 XT skid loader and a roller attachment that I put on the front. Um, so then I started to prep driveways and that was even, you know, I was making more money than I was mowing lawns. So I was like, all right, well, this is, this is kind of nice. Now I can start doing this. And I w- worked as a subcontractor for my dad um, throughout the summers doing driveways. And then in the winter, I did snow removal for a, a neighborhood up in Long Grove where I had all of the driveways that I was uh, responsible for and then the streets as well. So that was a super, super nice uh, little project for me to kind of carry me through the winter. Um, yeah. And then I sold, I sold the lawnmower to uh, my sister and she took over all my accounts. So I was able to make a little money there and then saw that there was a bigger opportunity in prepping driveways <laughs> and snow yeah. removal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, there's there's a lot less competition. You you, you basically yeah. stepped. You you swam to the deeper, cleaner part of the ocean. Exactly. Sure. <laughs> yeah. You know. Yeah. So, Definitely a little competition because I think the equipment's uh, a little more expensive. 